Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Florida. You know the saying, the further north you go, the more southern it gets. There's something very special about how the folks are up here. This is America, boy. Now we've heard about Florida rednecks. They're all over the place. You could probably ask 10 people where the biggest concentration of rednecks are in this big old state. And you'd get 10 different answers. A lot of people would say Cross City and Chiefland have a lot of redneck culture. So I went there. From what I could tell, these places are definitely some shade of neck, but I wasn't as impressed as I was when I wound up in the most unlikely of places. In early May, I visited Florida's Panhandle. And not just any part of Florida's Panhandle. I wanted to go where I had heard it's as redneck as they come. The place I picked was Little Holmes County, population 19,927. It's a teeny little spot that's wedged way up against Alabama. Actually, most people say Holmes County is an extension of Alabama. That's why they call this part of the state LA, or Lower Alabama. As I would see, Holmes County is redneck in many ways, there's no denying that. But it's also full of surprises. And after talking to folks here and looking around for a day, it was clear this part of the state is some of the last true old Florida we have left. And that, folks, is not good. Panhandle, you're all that is left. The rest of the state is so crazy. You're my hero, please don't ever change. You need to stay true to your heart. Look at this joint. It's called Sam's Place. Sam's Place is a bar just outside of Bonifay, Florida. Everything about Sam's screams panhandle. This place has been here since the 50s, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's changed much since. I spent most of my night in Bonifay right here in Sam's and had some great conversation with the locals. As I discovered, people who frequent this bar are down to earth and they're very opinionated. But we'll come back to this place later. First, we have to see what the rest of the region looks like and understand what the heck's going on up here. Now, I picked Bonifay because it's just about smack dab in the center of the panhandle. Plus, it happens to be the biggest city in Holmes County. This county has a reputation of being home to some of Florida's last true holdouts. Folks that live a simple life they get dirty, they work hard, and they vote conservative. You can see the map of the county breakdown from the 2020 presidential election. Most of the panhandle looks like this, just a big sea of red. And that's Holmes County right there, the reddest of red in the state of Florida. And it seems to be getting redder here all the time. When I visited Bonifay, it was 2022, a midterm year, and two years after Donald Trump lost his re-election bid. And I'll tell you what, Folks up here have a lot to say about that, and Joe Biden, Ron DeSantis, and the changes happening all over Florida these days. Holmes County is sparsely populated. There's only about 20,000 people in this whole region, and it's made up of four small towns, a dozen unincorporated communities, and one actual city, Bonifay. Bonifay proper only has about 2,700 residents. This small city is far different than the rest of Florida, and it's very representative of the Panhandle as a whole. Folks up here are younger, whiter, and less affluent than the rest of the state. While Bonifay is 85% white, Florida as a state is about half white, and Bonifay residents bring in about 20% lower incomes than the state average too. Bonifay was founded in 1882 because it was at the intersection of two major railroads. Today, it's still very blue collar here. Outside of Bonifay, it's more of the same. I drove around Holmes County and many of the roads I drove on weren't even visited by Google Street View drivers. Sure, it's rough in many areas, and this part of the state probably wouldn't be considered very desirable by a lot of people. But is this place redneck? What is a redneck? And why does the Panhandle have such a redneck reputation? Your definition of a redneck might not be the same as my definition of a redneck, but let's admit, we all have a general stereotype we can agree on, so we don't have to waste any time trying to find what that is. But do these folks consider themselves redneck? While driving down a dirt road in a more rural part of town, I came across a few dudes hanging out, getting ready to do what panhandled dudes do. So I stopped to talk to them. 
Oh, we got Rick. Rick, tell me what it's like in Holmes County. A lot of country folks, a lot of woods, um, trucks, um, small town, not a lot of big cities. Um, there's a lot of people on drugs, so you might not want to move here like if you're from a different state. So everybody, there's a stereotype that everybody up here is like conservative. Everybody loves Trump. Everybody likes Trump. But I like Biden. But that's because I'm from Nashville. Do you get a lot of shit for being a Biden supporter up here? Oh, no, I don't. I'm not open about it. So everybody thinks everyone up here is like rednecks and shit? Yeah, basically. Is this like the redneck capital of Florida? Redneck capital. What, what's the definite, like, what's a redneck? What's the definition of a redneck? Right there. They drive trucks. But they work a lot. Hard working and driving Hard trucks. Hard working driving trucks. Um, just living out in the country. You know? That's about it. Now, I have to admit, my initial goal was to show how necky this county was by focusing on the various trailer parks and rundown areas. You know, the stuff that defines stereotypes. But after talking with people here and seeing the area, I kind of changed my mindset about what a Holmes County redneck really is. I mean, sure, there's plenty of rundown tracks all over this county. There's dirt roads with mailboxes at the end of them. And along these roads are unkempt trailers, rundown homes, trucks parked in yards, and washing machines on porches. I saw lots of Trump flags, shirtless people, lawns that needed to be mowed, and clothing lines in front yards. But there's also nice parts of town, too. Neighborhoods with very nice looking homes where you can tell people seem to live a very nice middle class lifestyle. Would these folks consider themselves to be rednecks too? Rednecks aren't just poor like they're depicted in media and in pop culture. They're hard working folks with good values too. As I drove around, I wondered, are these people hardcore conservatives who like getting their trucks stuck in the mud too? It was hit and miss. Much of Bonifay looks like a regular small town. But then you drive through the Piggly Wiggly parking lot and it's a bunch of pickups. I also went to the local gas station and sat there for about 20 minutes watching a string of folks go in and out making assumptions. Just regular folks doing regular things like in most other places in America. All over Bonifay, I did see people who confirmed my redneck bias. However, perhaps the most redneck place in all of Holmes County is a little dive bar just on the outside of town. Remember Sam's place? Now, if you were to build a perfect replica of a redneck dive bar and stick it in the middle of the most redneck part of Florida and you filled it with the most stereotypical panhandle crowd, you couldn't do a better job than Sam's place. The way the place looks, the music the place, the outfits, the smell, they should shoot a movie here. It's that perfect. The kind of place where you can buy all your friends a drink for nine bucks. Inside, you're going to find everything a redneck seeker seeks. Locals with boots and cowboy hats, camo hats and flip-flops, cut-off jean shorts and crop tops. The owner of the place is a man named Jerry. Now, I sat down with Jerry and other regulars for a couple hours, and we talked about a lot of things. Jerry didn't want to appear on camera because he says he's not a technical sort of guy, but he and others at Sam's enlightened me as to the viewpoint of a lot of folks in these parts. Of course, there was a lot of talk about politics. As you might expect, it's very conservative up here. Outside of a few people like Rick, who we met earlier, there aren't a lot of Joe Biden people up here. A lot of the people I talk to can't even identify with the liberal point of view. It's very much a live and let live vibe up here. There's a lot of complaining about mask mandates, illegal aliens, gun rights, freedom, taxes, Joe Biden, you get the point. And a lot of people up here complain about what's happening in the rest of Florida. Kind of anything south of Gainesville. The culture up here hasn't changed much in a long time. Although, new folks are starting to trickle in up here. Some people moved into town when Hurricane Michael devastated the Panama City area. And that's about an hour away. The hurricane had hit two years before and it caused a lot of damage. And the rent in Panama City went from $500 to $1,500 a month. So, a fair amount of people moved inland. There's also a smattering of people moving up here from downstate to escape Florida's outrageous cost of living spike. Others are fleeing the crowds and the liberalism taking over parts of Florida too. I don't get it. Why don't they just get better cars and clean up? Who wears flip-flops to a bar anyways? There's nothing wrong with the way these people live, Karen. 
They're good folks. They just want to be left alone. I actually disagree with the way you live your life, ma'am. The Panhandle definitely has a brand. It's known statewide for being a place with a lot of people less financially motivated than the people downstate. Lots of people in Florida think panhandlers are ultra conservative and even slightly racist. In reality though, it's filled with nice people. It's a great place to grow up or you can still find plenty to do outdoors. There's room up here. They look out for one another. If you break down, somebody will stop to help you and it's likely gonna be somebody you know. It might not look like much and a lot of Floridians might not think it's an attractive place to grow up, but that's kind of how they want it up here. Stay out. Stick to your overpriced, crowded coastal cities. Folks up here just want peace and quiet. They don't want it to get big. It's Friday night football games, local springs to swim in, and lots and lots of stars at night. It's large tracts of forest and huge farms. It's a lot of community support and honest and trustworthy neighbors. There's very little drama, maybe a stolen tractor or a drunken fist fight up here. Holmes County, probably the most redneck place in the state of Florida. And that's saying a lot. This area up here is how Florida used to be. And sadly, it's just about one of the last areas of Florida that's true to its old self. It's not for everyone, but I think it's great. There's something comforting about a community where folks are halfway broke and under the radar. Sam's place is certainly under the radar. Unless you happen to stumble across it, you'd never even know it was there. But the owner says Sam's might not be a gathering spot for these folks for much longer. The county's considering widening the road, which would mean the bar would likely be torn down one day. New Florida is encroaching on old Florida, even way up here. And that is a theme that would come up over and over on my Florida journey. Call these folks rednecks, or call them good, honest, true blue, hardworking Americans. They probably wouldn't care either way. The Panhandle, you're all that is left. The rest of the state is so crazy. You're my hero. Please don't ever change You need to stay true to your heart Don't ever change, Panhandle Some good folks up here This is America, boy Now we're going to be joined by Janet, a Bonifay resident She's lived in Bonifay since 1973 And she created the Facebook page Bonifay Florida That has more than 3,000 fans Okay, everybody. So joining me right now is Janet, who lives in Bonifay, Florida. Hi, Janet. Hi there. It's really nice to meet you. I, um, I, I was in Holmes County for a couple days um, a couple weeks ago, and I went to the Panhandle because I had heard it's kind of the, the last remaining part of old Florida that's left. You know, everything right. downstate is just crazy. And I wanted to see, you know, I, I'm a kind of a redneck dude. I like to get down with the country folks. And I went out there and hung out for a couple of days and had a really good time. And Ooh. I wanted to say that I really like where you live. Well, I think it's a neat place to live. Um, you, it's very rural. There's not a lot of, um, like places to go out like if you're used to the big city but usually people around here they usually have a fire or they go to the creek and they go to a sandbar somewhere on the river <laughs> and that's where people party per se and uh it, it's it, to me it's a neat place to grow up and live i went to school here um went kindergarten through 12th grade here yeah i i you know i i lived on a farm in indiana for five years and you know it's a, a town way smaller than bonifay there were 500 people there and i mm -hmm. just grew to appreciate what it's like to just be out away from everybody um how do people feel about like the how things are the difference between the panhandle and like the rest of florida are there a lot of people up there that are like we like it up here where it's quiet and cheap and we know everybody. A lot of people move here because it's quiet and cheaper to, to live than it is. And they are tired of the hustle and bustle and the traffic of the city. So a lot of people like it quiet and, and everything. Now, jobs 
you do have to drive out to get jobs. Um, usually, me being in the medical field, you usually don't have to drive too far because there's places to work around. But but that a lot of people do have to go outside this area for jobs. It seems like everybody's more content with living a slower paced lifestyle, cheaper lifestyle up there. They're not worried about fancy anything and good for them. I, I like it. I like the fact that if I want to have chickens and I want to have a rooster that crows at three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, that's okay. Cause I'm in the country and that's okay. I have a yard full of birds. Um, chickens and I, I have a peacock too and guineas and it doesn't bother anybody because my neighbors aren't super close and you know you can grow your own vegetables and I, I'm starting that this year is the first time I've ever grown my own vegetables so that that's nice you can't do that in the city <laughs> no way you know, I, I, I saw some Trump stuff. I, you know, I, it, it seems like you, you look at a voting map and it, it, it clearly looks like just about everybody up there votes conservative. Uh, oh, it, most definitely. This is a very conservative area. And um, if you're not that way, uh, you probably don't talk about it a lot because everybody around here is conservative. Definitely. There's a lot of Trump stuff <laughs> still up. I saw. Yeah. No, there's tw there's Trump 2024, Trump forever. I saw all <laughs> the flags. They even had um, a, a sign going into the local hospital, something about Hillary should be in jail <laughs> or, or something like that. And I said, it, you know, people that are from out of town that are on the interstate that stop in at the hospital – think it has something to do with the hospital but it doesn't it's just the person that lives next to the hospital has that up <laughs> yeah how do you, so there's a clear divide in florida between the the liberal and the dem the conservative crowd you've got like most folks upstate and the panhandle are very conservative and then the lower you get you know definitely gets more liberal do you guys look do you look down upon your your south florida neighbors with with scorn at times you know, a lot of the Hispanics that have moved into the south, southern Florida uh, voted Trump. No, oh, I get so, that, yeah. Um, but you'll have your, I think around the colleges more, you have the, the more liberal views around Gainesville and, and actually not even there uh, because I was recently on a, on a vacation to, to central Florida around the Gainesville, Micanopy area. There are a lot of conservatives there looking at their signs outside. But uh, Tallahassee, very liberal. Uh, even going towards Defuniac and Pensacola, I saw, uh, you know, I see a little bit more liberal than I do here in the, I think it's the rural farmers are way more conservative. Mm -hmm. How's it changed since you got up there in the mid seventies? Well, I think with the advent of online, uh, the, the internet being the way it is, it's really caused a hit to the, the mom and pop businesses or the stores in town. So our, our downtown area has really, really suffered. Uh, recently we've had some people move into town that have bought um, some of the old buildings and they're, they're, you know, beautifying them and hopefully going to rent out some of them and put, get some businesses in them. But it, it's a struggle for businesses to make it because of the internet, I think, as mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, the, a lot of the the shopping. Now, restaurants, you know, we've recently had a restaurant that was near and dear to our hearts closed because of the, just recently, the price of food going up so high. So, um, you know, and I think people are kind of cutting back going out to eat, you know, recently. But they, 
restaurants have had more success than say shops. That's good. I, you know, somebody's at least some of them are making it. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the, the, like we have, you know, some cattle farmers across the road from me and we have, uh, dairy farmers and, uh, beef cattle farmers, uh, a little bit North of me and the same family has been doing it for 20 plus years. So, I mean, I'm sure they've been affected, but I, I couldn't say personally how. So the reason that I, you know, ended up in Holmes County partially is because Holmes County and the Panhandle has the reputation of being where like it's redneck land and all the rednecks are up there and Holmes <laughs> County's kind of right smack dab in the middle of the county. And Bonifay is is known around the state as being, you know, very conservative and 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 a lower lower lifestyle um, than the rest of the state in terms of country folks chilling. It's a poor county. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, would, would, would you define Holmes County as redneck? Probably, yes. But, I mean, I, I'm, for the most part, I'm proud of that. <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, I'm proud of the heritage of this area. But, um, I mean, re being redneck has a derogatory term, I know. But, yeah, I think I think it is pretty redneck if that's, you know, to me it's country. But now as far as uneducated, no. Um I think the education here is pretty darn good. I mean, uh but I came from a family that both my parents were teachers and so I was taught proper English. Um <laughs> And I think a lot of times rednecks, I think of not speaking proper English. And there's there's some illiterate, uh, grammatically incorrect people around. But I think that's everywhere. They're just not considered rednecks in, say, Tallahassee. <laughs> yeah. What what term do you see? So you're like redneck comes with a derogatory term sometimes. What what is what's the negative? stereotype that rednecks have that you think you're not comfortable with? Well, I think that, I mean, a lot of times it means um, uneducated um, or country um, bumpkin kind of like, you know, and that's probably not a term that's even used around here anymore, <laughs> but, 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 you know, uneducated is what I think is the derogatory look on redneck. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the stereotype is, you know, I guess like poor, dumb white people. But right. a lot of the rednecks I know are at least middle class, if not upper middle class. <laughs> um, and they're not dumb, you know. And, yeah, they, right. they, they chew and they drink beer and they, you know, they get That's after true. a little bit. They they wear jeans and flip flops out to nice restaurants and all that, but um, for the most <laughs> part, I, you know there there are different shades of of red. I would say. Yeah, yeah. I think down in the uh down just a little south of us in Panama City Beach, you'll see a lot more uh flip flops and uh, jeans and less than that going into restaurants, <laughs> but. Um, I, I really think there's a lot less of that around here. People dress up to go, you know, to go out to eat. But but there are a lot of poor people around here. Poor farmers, but not uneducated because I think the school systems are really good here. Good. So, like, if somebody was considering moving to the panhandle and they're not from Florida nor Alabama, um, what what advice would you give them? What what are some things they should know if they were going to move down to Holmes County? Well, be prepared for a culture shock if you're not used to not having a Walmart, you know, around every corner, lots of restaurants around every corner. Um, there's a lot of peace and quiet, but maybe not a not not a lot of nightlife here. And that if that's something you're looking for, if you can drive an hour north or an hour south, 
and and that's good enough for you then to me this is an ideal place to raise your children and um, it's peaceful and for the most part you you don't have i mean people are hospitable um your neighbors you know are usually they look out for one another like my neighbor across the road she she's gonna you know she'll she'll call me if she sees my dogs out in the road or or or, or something like that i mean people are hospitable around here good yeah there's not i you know i travel a lot i'm sure you have heard and you've probably traveled and seen that um it's just it's it's very rare to have entire communities anymore in this country um that are not small that are safe and and where people feel like they can that they know people and they can trust people and they can let their guard down and and just mm -hmm. chill out and um where everyone's friendly i mean you know the bigger the city the worse the the issues are with all the stuff that's going on so you're you're very lucky and blessed to live where you where you do right now while there's crime here no doubt and we're seeing and we're seeing more in that um i think just south of us there was a shooting uh this past weekend mm. but it was people from georgia passing through going from or to or from the beach um, there's very little crime that's here that's not, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not your drug related crimes. I mean, that's everywhere, but I feel, I feel safe here, whereas maybe not so much somewhere else. I agree. hundred mm. percent. Yeah. Now, after I left, uh, Bonifé, I ended up in Panama city for two days and, I did not feel safe in Panama City. So. Oh, no, no, definitely not. Especially if you were there anytime near spring break. Spring break makes you think drinking and partying and they are hog wild without parents or something. But mm -hmm. luckily we don't, we don't, everything to me seems much calmer and slower paced here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've lived in Florida your whole life. Yes. Um, is is it accurate for me to assume that the panhandle in the area you're in is how Florida used to be and is now one of the last parts of old think, Florida? I would think this area has changed very little in the time that I've been here, other than the fact that, you know, I, I, there's been a lot of loss of small businesses here because and i really believe that that is due to the fact that you know the the event of the of the internet and people purchasing things online and 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 you know the big businesses like walmart that that take away from the small businesses you know mom and pops top businesses but Recently, we, you know, again, we've had some people move in and we've had some people starting some mom and pop stuff. And there's a little community in Bonifay called Peppertown. And, and I have not been to their market yet, but evidently they're starting a little market down in that area. And I don't know if it's farmer's market slash other like things that people have made, but I'm, I'm interested in checking it out. Yeah. How would you feel if, if, if Bonifay started to turn into Panama City? Well, I wouldn't want it to turn into Panama City. I wouldn't mind if a few businesses came here, but I wouldn't want it to turn into Panama City. Definitely. But I don't think that there's danger of it ever getting that big because we have no beach here. <laughs> but... Uh, I wouldn't mind a little bit more businesses and a little bit more opportunity for jobs. Uh, what are some funny uh, or off the wall events that you can only find in Bonifay, Florida? Well, not maybe in Bonifay, but in Holmes County, there was the worm fiddling thing in Westville. Wasn't it a worm fiddling? I, I don't even know how you worm fiddle, but. <laughs> 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 so that would be something that, 
would be only around this area. Well, also, not in Bonifay, but in a nearby town called Wausau, there's a possum festival. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that's that's an unusual thing around. Um, I you uh, know what I I should I should come back to the worm fiddling day. I, I yeah I I can honestly say I've actually never been there myself, but okay. I I know that it that they have it. <laughs> That's good. <I'm> <laughs> um, we have a rodeo that is like a that's like a redneck um what do you call it redneck gathering like uh, it is a redneck you've never seen it, yeah th yeah you could see horses going up to the drive through at McDonald's possibly i mean during rodeo time and rodeo is the first weekend full weekend in october every year and this town transforms and there are horses and four-wheelers on the highway at times. <laughs> They're not supposed to be, but they are. <laughs> that and, sounds like I need to get back in October. I need to come yeah. to the worm fiddling and then the Bonifay Rodeo yeah. the first week yeah, of October. Yeah, I'm not sure when the worm fiddling takes place, but I do know that the rodeo is the first full Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it may be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in October however that falls and the Kiwanis club actually puts on the rodeo, but there is a ginormous, if I know that's probably not a word, um, rodeo dance. And, um, every, every year they have a huge rodeo dance and they have bands that one time I think they had Merle Haggard there. So Merle, Yes, yeah, so I mean that it's it's pretty huge. It's pretty huge. A lot of a lot of drinking going on during that time, but there's also a lot of fun. They have a lot of uh, campfires in town. They rent out camp sites in downtown, and they have a lot of people with tents and people riding their horses all over and. They have vendors and stuff, but the rodeo is a big deal in Bonifay. That's the biggest deal in Holmes County. I bet you Merle wouldn't go down to Miami. I bet not. <laughs> I bet not. The other states are probably <laughs> the other states are probably better. If you look at these dudes, point the camera. That's the definition. <laughs> So why why do people live up here rather than like down south? And, Panama. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little cheaper down here because it's in the country. But. <laughs> I support Biden. Why why do you support Biden? Well, I don't like Trump. It's not that I like Biden. I just don't like Trump. Why not? I don't know. I'll... Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.